All right, Dolphins fans, 2024 NFL Draft is officially in the books. It is all wrapped up now. I apologize for being a little bit late to the party today, uh, recapping day three of the NFL Draft for the Dolphins. We ended up having a lot of prospects, so rather than rushing something out on Saturday, I wanted to take a, a little bit more time, put out a complete video for you guys today. So now not only do we get to hit on the day three picks, so rounds four, five, six, and seven, for the Miami Dolphins. But hey, now that we've got some reported undrafted free agent signings as well, hey, stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to be able to hit on all of that action today. But before we jump into today's day three recap, I want to hear from you. Your thoughts on day three, your thoughts on the Dolphins' efforts in the draft just in general, your thoughts on the undrafted free agent signings, whatever you have got, NFL draft, Miami Dolphins related, go ahead and drop them in the comments. Because the Dolphins entered day three with four selections, we end up leaving with five players. And that's because we traded up into the fourth round, did not have a fourth rounder going into it, and we snatched up Tennessee running back Jalen Wright with the 120th pick overall in the draft. Now, when we traded up into the fourth, I kind of started speculating, hey, what do, what do we got up our sleeve here? Is it offensive line? Is it linebacker? Maybe wide receiver? Maybe someone in the secondary? I was admittedly a little bit surprised when I saw running back. However, when you find out that running back is Jalen Wright out of Tennessee, I can't help but be sort of pleased with the pick. Essentially yet another toy for Mike McDaniel in this offense that, well, at this point, I think we can say that it just demands speed. You need to hit like a certain threshold with your 40-yard dash in order to fit in as a playmaker on this damn team. 4 3 8, 40 at the Combine. Second in the entire FBS last year, having 7.4 yards per carry. Basically another guy where let's say something happens to Raheem Mostert, Devon Achan. Boom, enter another fast running back that defenses have to account for. But I will say that, yeah, this pick does feel like a duplication in regards to what we're already featuring at the position. I'll say that we still don't have a flat out power back on this roster outside of a guy like Chris Brooks. But you know what? Jalen Wright does pack. I'll say he packs some nice power in what's a pretty legit running back frame. He goes 5'10", 210 pounds. But this guy is just explosive. He's got the breakaway speed. I believe he had three touchdowns last year alone that went for 50 or more yards. He went over 1,000 yards on the ground last year. He did not re, um, produce too much in regards to catching the ball out of the backfield. But you know what? Most analysts you're going to see out there say he probably possesses that ability. It's just not something that he was asked to do while he was at Tennessee. But you tell you what, you put on his tape, though, he produced in a gap scheme. He produced in a zone blocking scheme. And with his speed and running the style that I think is best for him, he is best suited in this zone blocking scheme. So a really nice pairing for Mike McDaniel and this Dolphins offense. So yeah, overall, I will admit, I think it is a duplication of talents at the position. Insurance, nonetheless, for Mostert, for HN, who, yeah, both have battled some injuries in the past. All right, let's, uh, let's jump into this one because I know in advance that numerous loyal viewers probably loved this selection. And yeah, even though we took Chop Robinson in the first round, I also love this pick. In the fifth round of Mohamed Kamara, he's undersized when it comes to his height. He's only 6'1", but he still possesses pretty good weight as well at the position. 248 pounds, but man, he makes up for what some will say is smaller size with just the absolute relentless motor that he plays with coming off the edge. He was the Mountain West Conference Defense of the Player of the Year last year at Colorado State. Led the team with 17 tackles for a loss, third in the entire country with 13 sacks, and he did all of this in 12 games. So yeah, for the math people out there, that's averaging more than a sack per game, which is, yeah, obviously fantastic. He's sort of... Not a direct comparison to Chop Robinson by any means, but in the sense that he's got that very quick get off. He bends nicely around the edge, but he's also in a roundabout way, sort of can draw that Chop Robinson comparison into the fact that he's going to need to learn, develop, utilize some counter moves at the next level. But if you happen to hear his media availability after he was selected, in one word, it was fantastic. 
he basically said that he was happy that the Miami Dolphins selected him. He was obviously happy to be drafted. He basically said, though, every other team, the other 31 teams, they're going to regret this. We are going to make them pay. He was overall just upset that he sled to the fifth round. He took that very personal. So he's coming in with an extra added chip to his shoulder. And man, does he make to a what has now become a pretty damn impressive group of edge rushers. When this squad is healthy, Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, Shaq Barrett, Chop Robinson. Now you add Kamara to that as well. So I don't know in regards to Kamara about his year one impact. Obviously, we got to wait and see about the health of the, the top two guys that we mentioned right there. But I absolutely love the idea doubling down on edge in this year's draft. Like I said, especially with the two guys that we got. These guys were very high prospects for me. And I say that relatively speaking there. We knew Kamara was going to be one of those mid-round guys. But you know what? We go into this knowing that, hey, this could be Bradley Chubb's final season. And we'll discuss all that another day, another time. But I absolutely like the idea of doubling down on edge players, especially with the two that we got. All right, so in the sixth round, we got our first of two wide receivers in this year's draft. And I, this first guy, I didn't think he was really going to be even available yet in the sixth round. But Malik Washington, he spent his first four years at Northwestern. He posted some pretty average, modest numbers there. Then he did the opposite. He absolutely blew up while he was over there in Washington. He leads the FBS with 110 receptions. He goes for over 1,400 receiving yards and nine touchdowns in 12 games. So we actually talked about the position of wide receiver in our day two uh, recap video. And I said that, you know what, since we didn't take wide receiver on day one, on day two, we're likely not going to get a guy that's plug and play wide receiver three option at this point in the NFL draft. However, even though that's probably the case still here in this situation with Washington. He's obviously got some shortcomings he needs to overcome. Keep in mind right there, 184 overall. We're still talking about a guy that went in the sixth round. My opinion, this is a guy that fits pretty damn nicely in this offense as a slot wide receiver. He's super quarterback friendly. He did operate primarily out of the slot last year at Virginia. Highly targeted on those short, quick hitter type of routes. This guy's hands, who. They are great. They are butterly smooth. You hear about NFL, you hear analysts all the time, like uh, he, he actually catches the ball. He doesn't let the ball come to him. He's got smooth hands. He's got great hands. You're describing Malik Washington right there. This dude is ultra smooth when it comes to catching the rock. Now he doesn't run, I'll say he doesn't run the most diverse <laughs> route tree. Like I, like I mentioned, there's plenty of room for growth as a sixth round pick. He does a lot of those underneath type of routes, but man, is he a menace to defenders when he gets the ball in his hands as well? We talked about Malachi Quarterly earlier this offseason as a potential second, third round target. That guy gets the ball and he sort of turns into a running back. He looks a little bit like Jarvis Landry used to look like. Now, I don't think Malik Washington's at that capability um, as a guy after the catch. But I tell you what, he's got a little bit of that running back to him. You put on his tape, there's times where you think he's going to catch the ball, maybe get a couple of yards and then goes down. That's not always the case. He's got some fight to him. He will fight through those tackles. He will make guys miss. Absolutely love what this guy can do after the catch. So overall, I like the pick as a guy. You know what? Let Wes Welker get his hands on him. They're both those slot type of wide receivers. Let him get his hands on him. Let him help to see if he can develop him into a future contributor. All right. We had uh, another sixth round pick. And here's a guy that I will admit... <sighs> I did 100% of my studying on Patrick McMorris after he was selected by the Miami Dolphins. I honestly didn't do too much homework on any of the late round safety options. So this one will admittedly be uh, a little bit brief compared to the other ones. The main takeaway that I got from him was that he's got pretty good size. He's six foot, 207 pounds, moves fairly well in coverage. He just doesn't have that ideal that speed, that quickness to his game that I think can make him like an impactful safety at any point during his NFL career. He's played both strong and free safety. He's lined up over the slot wide receiver as well. So he's got some versatility to his game. I do like what he can provide there. A little Brandon Jones-esque where it's like, yeah, you can put him here. You can plug him here. You can, you can try him in this situation, but you know what? Maybe he's not going to hone in on just one overall thing. The thing is, there's just not any consistency to to, to his game. There's not just one thing that really pops for him. 
like I said, he doesn't have that burst uh, you'd like to see from a safety as he's closing in on the on the play. Uh, overall, he's got a little bit of a tackling issue, which at the safety position is not ideal, <laughs> to, to put it nicely. Um, so I'm not necessarily overly excited about the pick. Once again, keep in mind, we're talking about a, a sixth rounder here that's not even guaranteed for a roster spot. All right, one more pick, Dolphins fans. Here's that second wide receiver that we took on day three. <sighs> the last guy that we took on day three. And our uh, our final selection, like I said, of the 2024 NFL draft, oddly enough, has the same wide, uh, last name as the first wide receiver we took as well. So not only does Mike McDaniel want speed, he wants guys with the name of Washington apparently at wide receiver. But another guy is best suited for the slot as well. He's just five foot 10, 174 pounds. He doesn't have that that burst, we'll call it, that you'd like to see from a wide receiver. In my opinion, he does provide a little bit more in regards to the routes that he's capable of running when it's compared to Malik uh, Washington. But overall, I label this guy as he's super tough. He's gritty. He does a lot of his work over the middle, that kind of that danger zone where a lot of wide receivers are eh, sometimes hesitant to go. Despite his size and his build, he doesn't mind getting in there and just really cutting it up. He'll bring in more of those contested, those close body catches. Then you'd probably give him credit for it given his size. Like I said, though, he's just not overall, he's not twitchy. He doesn't have that ideal burst from the wide receiver position. Doesn't create as much separation from his routes that you would imagine given his stature either. But he's going to give you effort all day, every day. He's going to try to win exact any single way that he can. Uh, he's going to have to have his work cut out to make the final final 53. You got Tyree Kill, you got Jalen Waddell. Ferios, Ezukama, Craycraft, Malik Washington. That's already six guys right there. So maybe you're looking practice squad year one. And quite honestly, we'll talk more about that kind of roster stuff as the season goes on. Regardless, another option at the slot wide receiver for Mike McDaniel and this Miami Dolphins offense. All right, so we talked about those undrafted free agent guys as well. Let me get this up on the board. These are the ones that have been reported, at least as of recording today's video. Um, the team will actually announce when these signings are like officially official. But for the time being, this is what the lo list looks like going on your scroll as of uh, Sunday. I've got the list going on the scroll. I will dive into a couple that stood out to me. Um, let's talk about Mark Perry first. He's a safety out of TCU. Dolphins reportedly gave him a nice signing bonus, nice overall guaranteed money as well. He was invited to the East-West uh, Shrine Bowl this offseason. You look at him, though, and it's kind of the name of the game for the Dolphins at speed. A reported 4-3-7, 40-yard dash. I want to say that deal that he had was, I think it was around like $150,000 with a $15,000 signing bonus as well. But it does sound like there were a pile of teams interested in bringing him in as an undrafted free agent, but yeah, obviously decided to go with the Miami Dolphins instead. The other guy I want to talk about is uh, Storm Duck, cornerback out of Louisville. I just got a text from my from my connection with the Dolphins. We got a cheetah, we got a we got a duck, and uh, we got a waddle. So we got a penguin, we got a cheetah, we got a duck. I murdered what the text said, but you get the point. Um, one, yeah, like I said, we got to talk about him because of his name. Two, he's another guy that Dolphins reportedly gave $150,000 with a $20,000 signing bonus to. He did play at North Carolina for four years before transferring to Louisville last year. In those four years at UNC, he did have five interceptions. Unfortunately, didn't have any last year at um, Louisville. I'm going to drag that off the screen real quick. But yet another priority undrafted free agent that chose Miami over quite a few others that were bidding for his services. Uh, my connection with the Dolphins said it, it's a decent undrafted free agent class as well. Don't be surprised if there's – the Dolphins have been done, doing a pretty good job of this. There's typically one or two guys that are either on the 53-man roster or at least making the practice squad. He said, you know what, look for, look for some of these guys as well, maybe two or three of these guys making your 53, making a spot on the practice squad as well. So obviously we'll have more information about them as the offseason continues. I didn't have all the time in the world to go through all the prospects that we had, plus every single one of those undrafted free agents. But regardless, wanted to report what has at least been reported on as of today. We will cut it there, Dolphins fans. Thanks as always for everyone that checked out the draft coverage this offseason. Absolutely appreciate the support. 
We'll be back soon. So, hey, if you haven't gotten subscribed yet, make sure you are doing so. Like I said, we will call it right there for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.